Here's your knee. Let's talk about your knee. There's a lot of structures in the knee that can get injured, okay? This is the knee, this is your right leg because there's a little bone on the outside of our leg called the fibula, okay? Tibia, femur, tibia, femur, kneecap. People don't know that the kneecap is actually a little bone that floats inside of a tendon. The kneecap is only held onto the body by this tendon. See how it floats in there? Let's talk about some of the major structures, okay? Outside of your knee, this is the lateral collateral ligament called the LCL. Inside of the knee is called medial collateral ligament, MCL. Inside of the knee, you heard of the ACL and the PCL. This is the back of the knee. They're inside of here, okay? The ACL, anterior cruciate ligament, it keeps the bottom bone from coming forward, okay? PCL keeps the bottom bone from going backwards. The ACL is more commonly injured than the PCL, but both of them can be pretty traumatic injuries. Often the ACL is injured by, most often with a running sport, to where you are running and you decelerate and you rotate. It's the quick stopping the ACL to tear, rupture, get strained, okay? PCL is less common because you wouldn't really be doing anything backwards. Um, those ligaments live in the back of the knee. They go like way in the inside of the knee, okay? If you are running and you forcefully stop and rotate and you hear a pop, that is a very classic sign to, uh, that you've injured your ACL. Um, often, often people can actually survive and keep functioning with a complete rupture of the ACL or the PCL. If you're a high athlete that wants to train, they probably wouldn't want to do that. ACL and PCL, they're ligaments, and that means they connect a bone to a bone back here, bone to bone. A tendon, which is different, connects a muscle to a bone. But back to the knee, okay? You're running along, you're playing some soccer, you stop, you twist, pop, ow! Most often an ACL injury. Often, with a, often it needs like a surgical repair. They can often use a ligament that's not from your body, maybe even from a cadaver or something to repair that. So ACL and PCL are structures deep inside of the knee that Usually, the only way to really injure them is a traumatic force, okay? For example, MCL, I mean, LCL and MCL, they are more a lateral movement to where if someone comes in like from the side and hits you here, ah, you may pull, strain, tear the medial collateral ligament. Now, another part of the knee that's really important is, is the meniscus, okay? The meniscus is like a little C-shaped, shock absorber that's in the knee. It's on both sides, okay? The thing that's really challenging with ACL and PCL and parts of the meniscus is that they are not innervated with a blood flow. And that means there's no oxygen. So your body cannot heal if there's no oxygen because you need oxygen to heal. So if you completely tear a ligament, it'll never regrow. You would have to have it surgically either reattached, maybe as some other type of ligament to be repaired. Um, the meniscus is the shock absorber between the upper and lower bone. It also can be injured with a forceful rotation move, okay? Because it is attached to both bones. So if you were to rotate the upper bone, you can really tear the meniscus. There's parts of the meniscus that are innervated with blood flow so that they can heal. Um, I think the outer third that's closer to the outside has more of a blood flow so it can heal. So depending upon what area of the meniscus you've injured or how you've injured it, kind of gives you some information whether it can heal on its own. If you're having knee problems from a traumatic injury, it doesn't seem to be getting better. I recommend an MRI to see the extent of the damage, what's damaged, how am I gonna fix it? Like, if you hear a pop and you do PT for eight weeks and it's not healing up, I would prefer to know ahead of time, is it a complete rupture? Is it something that can heal, okay? There's something that's called a flap tear in the knee. And then the meniscus are just two shapes like this, okay? Like this. Sometimes you can get a little flap tear, which just part of the meniscus is like a little flap. And it tears. Sometimes it's in a good position, sometimes it's not. And if that little flap tears between the upper and lower bone, 
this is a symptom people may recognize is they're like, oh, oh my knee is pretty good. Then all of a sudden it'll really hurt. And like I have limp, 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 limp for a day and it goes away. Sometimes that's a sign it could be a flap tear because suddenly that little flap, shing, it's, it's in between the bones and now you're stepping on it, it's gonna hurt, hurt, hurt. Move around, boom, goes back in place. So uh, that is a part of the meniscus that could cause that. There's another thing that um, people talk about having a runner's knee, okay? If you have pain in your knee that is right below your knee here, especially after running or some activity, it's down here. This is called runner's knee because it's tendonitis of the patella. Patellar tendonitis is runner's knee. It's called runner's knee because you run, you don't wear good shoes, your knee comes in, knee doesn't track right, the tendon gets irritated, it becomes inflamed, and that's called tendonitis, okay? Anything with an itis after the word means inflammation of. So tendonitis, inflammation of a tendon. Bronchitis, inflammation of your bronchioles. So just remember that. There's another structure of your knee that it's an annoying part of the knee to get irritated is the cartilage, okay? Um, younger people don't really have a cartilage injury or, or problems. It's usually more from wear and tear. For example, the kneecap is covered with smooth surface called cartilage, okay? Same thing inside the knee here. It's all nice. If you're young, healthy, it's like smooth. It's like China on China. Everything moves fine. Um, if You've done a lot of compressive sports. Uh, if you jump, 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 anything that does a lot of forceful soccer, people running, the cartilage can actually get a little worn out. What happens is if the cartilage wears, 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 and you get through the cartilage, it'll start having exposing a little bit of the bone. Here is a perfectly good knee. The kneecap is missing on here. The blue represents nice, smooth cartilage, okay? Here's the same ligament on the outside. Lateral, collateral. Lateral means outside. Medial means inside. What starts happening is if the cartilage has gotten worn, this little red part is, is where the cartilage is worn out and a little bit of bone is exposed. Then every time when you step, this little part where the cartilage is worn out will rub and it'll really hurt. It's almost like good cartilage, no problem. Bad cartilage, ow, ow, ow. You say people, oh, I sit in a movie theater, my knees really ache, I gotta stretch them out, okay? That's kind of a sign that the cartilage is a little irritated in there and it doesn't really like sedentary positions, okay? Wear and tear of cartilage, as you progress further in life, generic term is called arthritis, okay? And um, to tell you about arthritis, that too is a generalized term. It means itis, inflammation of a joint. So it doesn't mean that I have arthritis, like rheumatoid arthritis, but people get really scared of that term, but we're all gonna get it, we're all gonna have it, and may or may not cause you any pain. Just know any area that you use a million, million, million times, that you will get maybe a little bit of wear and tear, degeneration, a little arthritis. So you can have arthritis in your shoulder, in your knees, uh, in your back, and you may or may not have pain. So some of the tri tricks and tips I suggest for knee pain, okay? If you're playing a lot of sports, and it's forceful sports, football, rugby, anything that you're gonna get hit, there's just chances you could injure the major structures of your knees. If you're doing a more of a repetitive exercise, like running a lot, um, jumping a lot, and it starts to ache, those are probably more minor strains and sprains that you can take care of. Knees respond really well to ice, okay? Unless you're 70, 80 and it's arthritic, heat's good, but let's say for our general population of athletic, normal people, knees achy, ice the heck out of them, okay? If you know you have a tendency to have knee problems, and let's say you have an event coming up, a sport, a game, and your knees aren't doing good, just ice your knees every day, three, four days before the event. If you're a person who has achy knees, but you're gonna train anyway, then you just have to ice afterwards in the evening, 15, 20 minutes. One of the things I suggest that are helpful with knees, when you ice it, Wrap something around it, compress the ice into the joint because the more you can compress ice onto anything, the deeper it'll penetrate. If you just slap that ice there, it may only penetrate what, I make it up on the number like 40%, but you wrap it on, it's gonna go deeper, deeper, 60, 70% deeper. So I suggest that for any body part, unless you're laying on it for your back. Another thing for your knees is that you must start a stretching routine of some kind. You must keep the hamstrings loosened. We were just talking about that. You gotta even keep the quads loosened and the hip flexor, okay? Another thing that is key is foam rolling. Um, 
For example, it's kind of interesting. I don't think you can see it on my knee, but see how my kneecap is here? When your kneecap should be straight. So this kneecap is straight on me. This kneecap is gone at an angle here. Now on my MRI, at my age, all the cartilage is gone out here. So had I, in my 20s, foam rolled the lateral part of my legs, this kneecap probably would not have deviated to the outside. And if my kneecap would have been straight, the chances of uh, losing cart cartilage is a lot less. So I highly suggest get a foam roller, just leave it on your floor and like mess with it two, three times a week. Doesn't matter, the darker the color, is the firmer the surface, okay? And you see some of the foam rollers with the bumps and all that, it doesn't really matter what you get, just get one, okay? If you've just started out, the white ones are a little bit softer and they're a little more tolerable for pain. And I am a wimp, so I'm using this guy, okay? One of the things is wait, money ways to do it, okay? Doesn't matter if you're on the carpet or not, it just rolls easier on tile. What you wanna do is you wanna get on it. You might wanna start it on your buttock here. One leg's over the top like this. What you do is you slowly push yourself down the IT band, okay? And what you want to do, you don't want to get all hunchy like this, okay? Keep yourself straight. When you find a painful point, you just have to rest on it. If you do this, it's not going to be as effective. It feels effective, but you're like, ow, ow, ow. So keep going until you find that painful point and stop, okay? You can't go much further down the knee than here because of the joint, okay? Same sort of thing. Just remember, you can use this foot to push yourself. Find the painful point, like right there, and relax. Go up and down the, the IT band four or five times. You can get onto the quad as well, okay? Same sort of situation. Rolling it too fast just feels like a massage, but it's not gonna help lengthen the muscle. Um, it's hard to, you can mess with it, but you can't really foam roll the hamstrings because there's not enough force. You can kind of foam roll the quads, but most effective is you can get the IT band all the way up. Speaking of foam rolling, sometimes you can do your back, okay? You can't get much lower than this because you have floating ribs. And hold your hair or it gets stuck underneath the foam roller. If, if you're laying around in foam roller, do this, you know? This one you can go a little bit faster because you're just kind of putting movement into the spine. Lay on it like this, okay? This is good for people who have kind of that rounded spine, their neck aches, you can lay here with your arms out and that will stretch out the pecs that, that people just get too tight. So sometimes this just helps. Make sure your head is supported. Make sure your tailbone is on it. And this is just a more of a like a static, nice way to just relax onto that and get some tension out of your spine, okay? Everybody, they do this, right? They're like, I'm gonna stretch my hamstrings. There's a tip that you can do to help stretch your hamstrings. If you are, if you can even do it sitting all the time, okay? If you keep your back in an arched position like this and you come forward, you can't go much further because right now my hamstring is being stretched all the way up to the, the origin point. If I do this, I'm further, but I feel less of a stretch. You stay upright. Like here, I feel the stretch all the way up and down, okay? Don't do this. You can, but it's less effective. If you're up, you can even do it standing. You can put your foot up on something. And again, this is how we used to stretch. Now, stay upright, come forward. You'll feel a stretch from where it inserts all the way up, all the way up into the buttock here where it originates. So those are two ways to stretch the hammies or some tips on that. If hip flexors are tight, the basic hip flexor stretch is you can be on the floor, but you can also do it just standing. And when you're standing here, again, let's say this hip flexor is tight. You put it back, okay? Stand upright, and what you do is you just kind of squeeze your buttock forward, and that'll stretch right here. Don't do this, don't extend, but it's even, you can just kind of squeeze his buttock, hip comes forward, one, two, three, four, five, back. You don't have to squeeze butt too much, just push, one, two, three, four, five. Again, upright, not bending. Do them both, okay? So again, if you're coming from a sitting position, being sedentary, hamstrings, hip flexors are tight, that can be a thing that you can do right before you start running, okay? Stretch the hammies, stretch the hip flexors, keep the, keep the, lab, keep the outside of the knee loosened, keep the IT bands loosened, um, ice when the knees are inflamed. Uh, if it is a sharp, sharp pain, 
you know, just you, got, you can't just go straight back into exercise. If you are a person who knees ache a lot, you know you have a little bit of wear and tear, let's say your 40s and 50s, because age does make a difference. It doesn't really matter if you've been athletic or not, but our bodies, all of our bodies will have a tendency to break down because that's just what we do. Um, then, then you might want to wear a knee brace. Sometimes just a simple, nice pull on knee brace that's supportive can help a lot of people stop having that achy, achy, deep pain. They've got some good ones online right now. They're just really compressive and they just slide up and they actually some of them have a warming effect. No one really needs a brace that has the big metal things like that unless they have an ACL or a PCL problem, okay? Meniscal problems, you wouldn't need that. It's more for stability going back and forth. So if you're looking for a brace for your knee, slip-on ones are pretty good. Same thing if you have a weak ankle. Let's talk about ankles for a sec, okay? Um, soccer players, very common to have weak ankles because they just, they're always planting, rolling, wearing cleats. Soccer players with cleats, let's say you go to stop, cleats get stuck in that grass, knee comes forward, boom, mess up the ACL and PCL, or the ACL, okay? Again, if you, if you are a person whose ankles feel weak, you sprain them a lot, a nice slip-on brace is good. Um, if you're really unstable, I don't like the lace-up braces because they're, they're, they're uncomfortable to get stuck in the shoe. But there's some pretty good ones that they just have a nice little Velcro and you can tighten it down as well too. So that's not, if they, as long as it's comfortable, fits in your shoe and doesn't feel like it's pinching you when you bend, those are pretty good braces. If you're wearing a knee brace and you bend it up and it just like pinches back here too much, then that's not the best brace. So that is not a normal thing for a brace. Some people think it is like, oh man, I like the, I wear the brace, but it always pinches in the back. There's smaller, less tight models that will help you on that. You've got runner's knee, which is inflammation of the tendon. We've sprained the MCL, LCL. Uh, we've talked about the meniscus as the shock absorber. People always want to know, hey, what supplement can I get? And I'm not, a, I'm not an expert on supplements, but chondroitin and glucosamine are really good products. Um, sometimes if you're getting a really low priced brand, they don't have the con chondroitin because it's the more expensive part of the product. So uh, there's a lot of other things when it comes to a joint complex. I'm not the expert on that. I can get you some info on that. But, um, it's always good to take something like that when it comes to your body.